All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the whole shooting process of a recent photo shoot I did for some Jordan sneakers. And before we actually head out and shoot, I wanted to quickly cover the pre-production side of things and how I got ready for this shoot. So firstly, if you watch my recent video breaking down my first food photography job, you would have seen that I always create some type of mood board on canva.com. And for this shoot, it was no different because I created this mood board using photos that I found on Pinterest. And as you can see from some of the reference photos on this mood board, I was going for a more lifestyle shoot that showcases the sneakers in use rather than a product focus shoot where the shoes weren't being worn. And personally, this was just a stylistic choice that I went for. But when you're working with a client, they'll usually tell you what type of vibe they're going for. But now with the mood board created, I started to brainstorm different locations to shoot at. And in the end, I decided on the Asakusa area here in Tokyo. And I chose this location because one of the main sneakers we were shooting was red. And in Asakusa, there is the famous Sensoji temple, which is also red. So I thought we could get creative with some color matching. With that being said though, this location is one of the most famous spots here in Tokyo and it gets super, super busy. So to avoid the crowds, but still get some good light, we organized to start the shoot at 6 a.m. But now with the mood board created and the location locked in, I was then able to start planning what gear I'd be using. And for this shoot, I went with my Sony a7 IV camera and I brought my 24 to 70 millimeter G Master, my 85 millimeter Sony. And now with the mood board, location and gear ready, it was now time to shoot. All right, what is up guys? So we just got to the first location. We're in Asakusa, Tokyo. We're with the man himself, Japanese Vin Diesel, JC. <laughs> He's gonna be the model for today. We got a bunch of different uh, Jordan sneakers that we're gonna be shooting today. So come along for the ride. Uh, so for this one, we're doing like a jumping shot. So the main thing is getting a high shutter speed just to ensure it's frozen. So for this shot, I'm gonna go one over 800. I'm gonna play with the aperture, but for this first shot, it's gonna be aperture F 4.0 and then ISO 400. And I'm also using this line here as a leading line just to lead straight to the shoe. And I'm also gonna shoot in high burst mode because I'll take a couple of shots and just make sure I get one clean one. Okay, three, two, one, go. Three, two, one. Maybe what we can try is, bro, sort of like, yeah, you know, <laughs> you know it, bro. If you can, that foot that's on the thing a little bit down. Yeah, 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 exactly. So again, 85 mil, but just trying to color match with the red pillar and then the red sneakers. Shutter speed is one over 250. Aperture, I'm gonna go F 3.5. Three, two, one. Yeah, so pretty much we're still sticking with the red shoes at the moment. And we're gonna use these stairs as like leading lines and also just to add some texture to the background, still using the 85 millimeter. And this shot, I'm getting him to have one of the shoes up on the top step and then one shoe sort of hanging down. And for the settings, I'm going aperture F 4.0. Uh, shutter speed 1 over 4000 and then ISO 250 and just really playing with the shadows here because as you can see on the steps there's a lot of cool shadows so we're just going to position the main shoe which is going to be the main subject of the photo and we're going to put that in the actual light uh, let's try uh, three two one All right, so we're, oh shoot, I'll go again. Three, two, one. All right, so we've, fuck, I can't even talk, bro. I need some water, hold on. A few moments later. All right, so we've actually changed sneakers. Now we're going with the yellow Jordan 1. And pretty much we found this yellow line on the middle of the road. And what we're gonna use is, we're gonna use this as a leading line and I'm gonna get JC to jump again. So sort of what we did at the first location. 
For the actual setup, 24 to 70. I think I'll probably shoot this at around 70 millimeters. And again, we've got to make sure that the shutter speed is super fast to freeze it, but let's see how it looks. Uh, let's go, JC. So again, I'm going to position the camera quite low, and then I'm going to zoom in to about 70 millimeters. And once I've set the focus and everything, I'm just going to get JC to jump, and then I'm just going to shoot it in burst mode. So let's do it in three, two, one, go. Just like that, we got the banger. All right, so we're back in the studio now and it's now time to start editing these photos. And as we can see here, I took over 500 raw photos. So the first thing I'm gonna do is sort through all my photos and make my selections. So personally, I use the star rating tool inside of Lightroom Classic to mark the photos that I'll be editing. And when selecting photos, I'm usually looking out for things like composition, lighting, and sharpness of each photo. And once all my selections have been made, I can filter through them by clicking on the star icons here. And this will now show all the photos that I plan on editing. And for these photos, I followed a five-step editing process that consisted of first applying one of my custom presets, then next adjusting the preset for the specific photo and making sure the colors on the shoe were as true as possible. And then step three was adding any mask or selective edits. Step four was taking the photo into Adobe Photoshop to remove any objects and to basically clean up the photo. And then finally, step number five was bringing the photos back into Lightroom to add any finishing touches. And I know I just breezed through that whole process, but the actual recording of the edit was too long for a YouTube video. But if you're interested in checking out the whole unedited process of how I took this photo from looking like this to this, then I have left a link to the full video in the description below. But now before I wrap this video up, I just wanted to cover three quick tips to consider when shooting sneakers. So firstly, if you can, get your hands on a smaller size of the shoe because sneakers that are around a size eight or nine will always look better than the bigger shoe sizes. Tip number two is if you're shooting the sneakers with a model, make sure the outfit makes sense with the sneakers because this can really make or break your photos. So for example, if you're shooting some ASICS runners, you probably don't want your model to be wearing a suit and you'd wanna style them in some type of sports clothes. For this shoot, I had my model wear long white Nike socks that complemented the shoes, but also helped give off that more athletic slash basketball vibe. And my last tip for sneaker photography is location matters. So if you're planning to do more lifestyle photography like we covered in this video, then choosing your locations is super important and you really wanna do some research ahead of time to see what best matches the brand you were shooting. So for example, if you were shooting photos for a brand like Puma, you may wanna go for a more streety slash edgy vibe for your location. But if you were shooting photos for say Crocs, you may wanna choose a park or more nature vibes for the location. For this shoot, I used a lot of color matching with the sneakers. So that is an avenue you can also go down when choosing your locations. So basically the possibilities are endless, but when shooting for clients, just make sure you are choosing locations that match the brand's overall aesthetic. But now with that being said, I appreciate you for making this far in the video. And if you found some value from it, hit the like and subscribe button. And if you're interested in learning my top six ways to start earning money as a beginner photographer, then check out the video on the screen and I'll see you there.